today we're talking about isosceles and equilateral triangles. And the definition of an isosceles triangle is a triangle with at least two congruent sides. So we can have three congruent sides, but for an isosceles triangle, we need to have at least two congruent sides. And I want you to have that definition in your notes. I also want you to have this picture in your notes. Remember that the legs of an isosceles triangle are the congruent sides, and the base is the non-congruent sides. Now, base angles are the angles that go from the base to each one of the legs, and the vertex angle is the angle that makes up the two legs, where the sides of the vertex angle are the two legs. I want you to have this isosceles triangle theorem in your notes. So please write this in your notes. Isosceles triangle theorem says that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite these sides are congruent. So when I, ha I really like this picture that I found. And so you're going from the sides to the angles. So if AB is congruent to AC, then you have your angles congruent. Okay, so angle sides gives us angles is our original isosceles triangle theorem. And I remember that because first thing we learned about isosceles triangles is something about the sides. And then we learned something about the angles. Now our converse. And again, I want you to have this whole slide written in your notes. The converse of our isosceles theorem says if I have angles equal, so if angle B is congruent to angle C, okay, then the sides are congruent. So the exact converse, so when you're going from angles to sides, that's our CITT, or our converse of the isosceles triangle theorem. Okay, please, you might want to pause the video, but please make sure that this is in your notes. I want every single example in your notes, so it might be helpful if you pause the video. So, name congruent angles. So, in this triangle here, okay, in the big triangle, J, M, K, side J, M is congruent to J, K, so I have those legs congruent. Now the base angles, these base angles are congruent. So there those base angles are congruent. So angle J, M, K is congruent to angle J, K, M. Now naming our congruent sides. Down here, angle PMK is congruent to angle PKM, so that's going to give me sides congruent of PM congruent to PK. Please have these properties down. This is not something I don't think we need to put in our note cards, but an equal lateral, so an equal sided triangle is also equal angular. The converse of that is also true. Equal angular triangles are also equal lateral. So you know that if all the sides are equal, you have all 60 degree angles because all the angles are equal. Okay, solve for angle T and side TS. Explain your answer. Well, notice this picture, and make sure you have this drawn in your notes, that RT is congruent to RS. That tells me then the base angles are equal, so angle S is congruent to angle T. So I can say angle T is equal to 60 degrees, 
by our isosceles triangle theorem. Remember, sides gives angles is our isosceles triangle theorem. So this angle is also 60. Now I need to find TS. Let's look at what angle R is. Since I have one angle that's 60, another angle that's 60, when I subtract from 180, we also get angle R to equal 60. by our triangle sum theorem. So I have three angles that are all 60, equal angular triangles are also equilateral. So TS is then equal to 3.5 because equilateral, I'm sorry, Equal angular triangles are also equal lateral. Okay, solving for each one of the variables. Um, looking at this, I notice right away that this side is equal to that side. So I know that this angle here is getting equal this angle here. So angle D, I'm sorry, angle D is equal to angle E. But then also notice the markings for angle E and angle F. Those are also equal. So this is an equal angular triangle, which also means I'm equal lateral. So I know each one of my angles is equal to 60. So 4x minus 8 is equal to 60 degrees if I add 8 to both sides. And then I divide by 4, we get 17. Now since all of your sides are equal, 6y plus 3 is equal to 8y minus 5. Add the 6y over. Add the 5 over, and we get y equal to 4. The last thing we have is a proof. Okay, so again, make sure you have the given the proof and the picture written down. And again, all our proofs are going to be congruent. I'm sorry, two column proofs. All proofs start with the given. So I write down my given, and our reason is given. Now mark up your diagram. So FG is congruent to FJ. HF is congruent to IF. And I'm going to need to prove HG congruent to IJ. So that's where we're going. My guess is we're going to have to prove our two side triangles congruent. And there's a couple ways we could do this. It's kind of funny because now I see a different way than what I originally proved it as. So remind me in class the next time I see you guys to show you the other way. But I'm going to show you one way to prove this, and then I'll show you the other way in class. Okay, one way. Notice the big triangle, F, G, J. We have F, G congruent to F, J, so the base angles are equal. So, angle G is congruent to angle J, and that is our sides going to angles is our isosceles triangle theorem. I'm going to number some angles in here.
So now numbering those angles, similarly in the small triangle, the inside triangle, FHI. Angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, again also by ITT. So I'm going to mark that with 2. Now, 1 and 2 are supplementary. 3 and 4 are supplementary because they form a linear pair. Remember our reason in, the, in proofs. 1 and 2 are supplementary. So I can state that they are supplementary. And angle 3 and angle 4 are supplementary. So when I do that, okay, I have two sets of supplementary angles. Remember, that was our supplements theorem. And I apologize if I spelled that wrong. Supplements theorem. Now, remember, we've said 2 and 3 are equal. So 2 and 3 are equal. 1 and 4 are supplements of congruent angles. Supplements, so 1 and 4 are supplements of congruent angles, so then I can say 1 is congruent to angle 4. So 1 and 4 are congruent um, supplements of congruent angles are congruent. So 1 and 4 are equal. Now I can say that my triangles are congruent. I can now say these side triangles. Triangle F, G, H is congruent to triangle F, J, I. by angle, angle, side. Or I could go angle, angle, side. Hey, okay, just as a reminder, side, side, angle, not a way to prove triangles congruent. Now that I have my two triangles congruent, I can say GH or HG is congruent to IJ by CPCTC. Okay, please for me, check on Schoology to see what your homework assignment is and be working on that now.